Um, but I just want to say good morning to everyone. And um, this uh, this day has been a long time in coming. Uh, during the the course of the mayoral campaign and the city councilor campaigns, candidates, including uh, I, talked at great length about what we observed in many neighborhoods in this city, and that is. Uh, a rapid deterioration of uh, of uh, sidewalks, of houses, and of, of quality of life. Um, and much of the problem, in my view, and the view of many others who are running for office, uh, was that um, the problems were attributable in great part to uh, the fact that many homes in our city, in certain neighborhoods, had been uh, bought out by uh, absentee landlords, folks who didn't live in the neighborhood, don't live in the neighborhood, and who uh, uh, flouted uh, the housing code, the housing code, the fire code, the health code, uh, and didn't operate the properties and manage their properties like their own homes. So if we get Uh, and so what we have, uh, we're, what we're here uh, to do today is to re really um, uh, address that problem because what we've had in, in recent years is um, the problems in the neighborhoods have spilled over into the schools, they've uh, burdened the police department, they've burdened social <coughs> service agencies. Our neighborhoods are blighted, certain neighborhoods are blighted in ways that we've never seen before in New Bedford and we are uh, right next to uh, a neighborhood where this is a uh, that is a good example of this problem. If you walk down Rue Street, especially when the weather's warm, uh, you can't help but feel a sense of uh, of disorder and decay that uh, is really new to New Bedford. Um, uh, it's, in my view, we cannot let this continue. Uh, or else we're going to have much larger problems over larger uh, areas, areas of our city. So what we're doing here today is, from my standpoint, is fulfilling a campaign promise, and from everyone else's standpoint who wasn't running for office uh, in the last uh, year or so, um, fulfilling a, uh, a priority. Um, everyone here believes that we've got to, to stem the tide. Um, so I've, it is my pleasure today to stand here with District Attorney Sutter, uh, Police Chief uh, Preventure, Fire Chief Gomes, as well as members of the City Council, Steve Martins, Brian Gomes, Joe Lopes, all of whom have been actively working on this, this effort in recent weeks, uh, to announce uh, a task force that is designed to uh, remedy the problem. We are calling the task force, the Mayor's Task Force, for uh, on neighborhood quality. Uh, the idea here is that our efforts are geared toward uh, making our neighborhoods more livable. Uh, the task force is comprised of uh, the folks you see here uh, and others. Uh, it's a multi-agency task force. It includes efforts, support from the district attorney's office, uh, as, and is uh, joined by the police department, the fire department, um, inspectional services, the health department, animal control, the health department, am I missing any? Parking, enforcement, AG. the AG's office, uh, Steve Marshallek from the Attorney General's office is here. The idea behind having uh, many people joining in here is, is that we need to concentrate our force, right? We need to make sure that we're all uh, operating from the same playbook, that all the, all the efforts, all the levers that we have available to us are brought to bear in a coordinated way, and only in that way will we ensure that there will be um, compliance by many of these uh, absentee landlords uh, over time. We want these people to treat uh, their properties that, like they treat their own homes. That is, that they keep they follow not only the code but also care for properties, knowing that human beings are living in them. Um, so it's my pleasure today to, to, uh, to announce the, the task force, and the effort here is going to be an ongoing one. And it, it is, over the next month, uh, going to be an effort that touches every area of the city, but especially those areas where owner occupancy is low. That's where the problem lies. The problem doesn't lie in those parts of the city where most people own their homes because 
Not surprisingly, people who own their homes tend to care for their homes better. Rather, it's in neighborhoods right here, and we'll take a walk through the neighborhood shortly, where, where few people own their homes anymore, uh, and where out, out of town landlords uh, have effectively run properties into the ground. Now, let me also say a couple of other things. One thing that this, this task force is not is an effort to penalize mom and pop landlords. There are many people in the city who own, and, and even people who live outside the city, who own a property or two in New Bedford. These are people who you know, may have moved out of the city at some point, retained their, their parents' uh, you know, three-decker, uh, and continue to rent it out and continue to care for their property. Those folks have nothing to worry about. The people who have something to worry about are the people who have bought up numerous properties and don't and have not cared for them, um, and and have run neighborhoods down in the process. That's that's the focus of what we're doing here today, and what we'll continue to do over many months as we go from the south end to the north end to the west end, uh, and and really follow up uh, our efforts repeatedly until until some of these folks, or all these folks, understand that they need to, uh, they need to invest in, in their property. So uh, with that, what I'd like to do uh, right now is to uh, recognize some of the community leaders that are with us. Celine Sareva is here, as well as Loretta Bork. I don't know whether Lynn Kosh from um, um, Operation Clean Sweep is here. I don't know if anybody else is here from uh, any of the neighborhood groups. But in any event, um, one of the things that I heard as a candidate and I've heard as, uh, as a mayor repeatedly uh, when I go to neighborhood meetings is the fact that um, I'd say about 80% of the meetings these days are devoted to a handful of landlords who don't care for their properties. And so I would just ask Celine and Loretta to speak to, uh, to some of the things they've observed in, here in the South End over the last few months, over the last couple of years in terms of uh, the willingness of landlords to, to uh, play by the rules. Celine, you want to go first? Yes, Daniel, I want to thank you for inviting me to this. This is something that we have uh, been looking for for a lot of years. I speak for Loretta, I speak for myself, Ken Resendiz. Uh, this is very, very, very important to us. I urge you people today, when you leave here, to go by 596, 598 Brock Avenue. I've had to look at trash being put out without Easter. And it's not, it's not very pleasant when you see most homeowners taking care of their property and people that don't live in there that do not take care of their property. So Mayor Mitchell, I am delighted to be here today and I, I, I'm so thankful that this is going to be going into effect. Good, thank you. Loretta? Loretta? Okay. Loretta's never shy from the microphone. <laughs> Welcome to my neighborhood. Today is a windy day, <clears throat> so the garbage that's on the street might be blowing right out of here into somebody, someone else's neighborhood, hopefully. But it still needs to be picked up. We do have that problem. I don't know how often your task force will be meeting. The, the issues that are brought before them, how quickly will they be addressed? I had a meeting the other night where John Floor showed up. I had a tremendous amount of neighbors that showed. My meeting lasted over two and a half hours, which is unusual, and John was beginning to really move around in his chair, and I apologized to him, but we did have issues, and he did take them all down. You know what they are. We have absentee landlords, some of the three biggest men in the city who are absentee landlords that own property in our neighborhood and have made it miserable, really, really miserable that the owner-occupied uh, property owners in this area. We need to have that addressed. People cannot stay inside their houses. They have to be able to get outside and enjoy their neighborhood. They also have to be able to enjoy each other in the neighborhood, which is not happening. There's such a breakdown in communications. And this is where we have to get together and make things work. And 
that is going to, this is going to be a beginning. I have seen the task force in operation years ago. They were in my neighborhood. It was fantastic. I know when you have your operations, uh, your raids this time, I would love to be an observant on the street, so I would ex like to have an invitation to attend the ones in my neighborhood so I can see what's going on. Uh, it is such, you have the whole neighborhood out there looking to see what is going on. And I have another thing I have to mention too because of these absentee landlords. I have people that have bought property in the neighborhood. They are absentee landlords. They are excellent landlords. They do not allow drugs in their homes. They have children, but no drugs. Those are the people I don't mind having come into the neighborhood. However, with the empty property that I have here, I have tried to talk them into purchasing the property and putting in their own tenants, but because of the situation, they are walking away from the neighborhood. That I cannot put up with because we need that type of people in our neighborhood. In fact, it's Catholic Social Services that has been doing this. They have bought property, they've rehabbed it, they've sold it, they've put in wonderful tenants. They have property that they rent and these are the people that they will not tolerate drugs. That I don't, that this is such a big, big thing for the neighborhood. Those are the people I want coming into here, but they will not look at anything anymore. So do what you can. I'll help you all I can. We'll let you know where the problems are. And uh, I hope this thing works out and lasts for a long time this time. Yeah, thank, thank you, you, Loretta. Let me, uh, we, have, <laughs> we, have a, we have a very noisy venue here. It's okay, it's gonna keep us all on our toes. Let me just follow up with a couple of comments. I remember, if it wasn't the last time, it was the second last time that I was at the Cove Street Neighborhood Association. There was a woman whose name escapes me who lives on Roosevelt Street, and she made the comment that she uh, lived on Roosevelt Street for 46 years. Uh, had grown up there, lived uh, right next to uh, the house she had grown up in. And uh, she said that you know the neighborhood has changed so much that she doesn't go outside of her house. She's a, she's afraid to deal with a lot of the neighbors who've moved in to some of these properties that the absentee landlord uh, landlords have bought up. Uh, Roosevelt Street is a particularly pressing place. If you haven't walked down Roosevelt Street uh, recently, you should to, to get a gander at it. Um, and uh, that's unfortunate. People who've lived in neighborhoods for a neighborhood or on a block for a long time should be able to enjoy the place where they, that they've called home for their whole lives. Um, um, and what you've just heard from Loretta is something that, and from Celine, uh, is something that, that we hear, that the council's here, hear, that the DA, that the police chief hears all over the city. It's true, what's true here in Cove Street is also true for instance, uh, along North Front Street. You know, Steve Martins grew up on North Front Street. Steve Martins is not, not that old. Don't let, don't let him fool you. Um, the neighborhood has changed dramatically, right, Steve, and just in the last few years. And a lot of it has to do with problems with uh, foreclosures uh, uh, occurring throughout the city uh, as a result of um, the crash of the world financial markets. That plays a part in it, too. We're not isolated here in New Bedford. But a lot of it also has to do with the fact that we haven't been enforcing the code properly, and that's, that's going to, uh, to end. Uh, let me introduce to you uh, our Before district. you go on, as you spoke about the woman on Roosevelt Street, I have a woman that lives on Vile Street. She's lived there for 25 years. She bought her home when the prices were way up high. She has thought very seriously of selling her house and moving out, but she would take such a loss. She's really hanging in there. She lives across the street from one of the absentee landlords. And her problem has been such that they have slashed tires, they've gone into her yard and destroyed things. She's had to put surveillance calendars, uh, cameras all around her house. 
and she has right now decided to stay. So hopefully uh, she will be a long time uh, uh, ten, uh, owner in the neighborhood once we get rid of some of our Right, so it's for, for, you know, in my view, it's for law-abiding, play-by-the-rules citizens like that, that, you know, we are here today, that we are going to press really hard and make sure that you know, people who own lots of property sit up straight, do right by their neighborhoods, uh, and, and again, treat the homes they own, the houses they own, as, as, they, as though they were their own homes. Let me introduce uh, District Attorney Sutter, who uh, has really made a career out of, out of the way he focuses on, on intractable problems. He did it uh, right from the get-go uh, uh, when he was elected district attorney when it, when it came to drug, uh, excuse me, gun offenses. Uh, and we've seen the results over time in our city with a reduction of gun violence. Uh, and I'm pleased that he's going to be joining forces with us today to deal with what, what is our current uh, major neighborhood problem, and that is with uh, with absentee landlords. So, Sam, pleased to have you here today. Thank you very much, Mayor Mitchell. Uh, just a few uh, quick thoughts. Hello, Celine. Hello, Loretta. How are you? Good to see you both and everybody. I want to applaud Mayor Mitchell for his idea, first uh, broached and discussed during his campaign for mayor, and uh, and I applaud him for following through just uh, four months after um, after he was sworn in. Uh, his uh, excellent idea is informed by a clear notion, which is that the more livable uh, a neighborhood is, the more appealing uh, a neighborhood is, the less crime there will be. That uh, uh, is an idea that uh, uh, was discussed uh, by uh, everybody from uh, Mayor Mitchell to, uh, 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 what's his first name, Bratton, Benjamin? Well, yeah, that was the William. protagonist Thank of the Fitzgerald. Yeah, so um, and I, I'm uh, excited to uh, to be part of uh, of this initiative. I, I think that um, we're going to be able to uh, forge uh, an excellent partnership. I think the district attorney's office can can assist in uh, in many significant ways. Uh, if um, if we have an idea of what the particular house is that uh, is a problem, the, the dwelling, the property that's a problem, and that property is attracting a drug offenses, public order offenses such as disorderly conduct or disturbing the peace, if it's a property where a copper or siding or whatever is being stripped, uh, a property where um, a prostitution is uh, taking place, then the district attorney's office can also zero in on that particular property, make it a condition of probation that the offender, the defendant for the drug offense or the prostitution offense or the larceny offense uh, be, be ordered as a condition of probation to stay away. Uh, and that's just one of the major ways that we can assist. I think we have the ideal person uh, uh, to, uh, to be the uh, liaison between the district attorney's office and the mayor's office in Cara Luciola, who's seated here today, who's uh, going to be coming back to the DA's office to be part of this initiative. She was a prosecutor uh, for a couple of years, then left to become a professor at Roger Williams Law School. But uh, we're on the march on this. Uh, and uh, as I said, I'm excited to be part of the partnership. Thank you. Thanks, Sam. Um, we're also joined here today by certain city councilors who have uh, really spearheaded the efforts to, to make this task force uh, a reality and who, and who have focused their energies on neighborhood improvement and code enforcement in the, in the last several months and the last several years. And again, Brian Gomes and Steve Martins are both here today supporting this. Uh, Joe Lopes uh, from the South End uh, is here as well. Joe, do you want to uh, add a couple of uh, comments? <laughs> it's all about quality of life, and, and you've got to thank Mayor Mitchell and his task force for putting this all together. And you know, earlier in the year, Council President Martins and I went to Lowell where we saw what other communities are doing. So we're not trying to reinvent the wheel here. We want to see what, what's working in other communities, make it work in your best. And you've got to commend, you know, bringing the entire task force together on one table to go over this. And everyone should feel comfortable living in their community. Your street should be longer than just in your front of your house. You should be able to go to the park walk to it from the grocery store or if you're going and feeling comfortable. And that's what this is all about. It's a straight quality of life where everyone should have the same quality of life. It doesn't matter if you live in the west end or the south end or the far north end. So I want to thank Mayor Mitchell and his task force for putting this together. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Joe. Let me, uh, let me introduce now uh, the, the two individuals who are spearheading 
uh, the effort itself and who have assembled the task force and how, who have uh, done the heavy lifting in uh, making this day and the task force a, a reality. Uh, first, uh, Christina Connolly, who's the, the assistant chief of staff to, uh, to the mayor, uh, it, it has uh, assembled uh, the pieces. Uh, for this task force. Christina, uh, in the last several years, has been spearheading neighborhood development efforts um, uh, over in the uh, Department of, of Housing and Community uh, Development. Uh, she takes her talents over to, to the mayor's office uh, and her knowledge uh, of our neighborhoods uh, in support of this effort. And I'm just pleased that, uh, I'm very pleased to have someone with, with Christina's talent on my staff for, for starters, but especially on uh, having her talent apply to this, this priority problem uh, in the city. Um, let me also introduce John Floor, who's immediately to my right. So John, up until a few months ago, was uh, an assistant DA working for Sam, and then we were able to steal him away from you, Sam, to uh, for the purpose of, of, highlight, of, of, of pushing this effort, um, and I thought personally that as someone who was a, a, a prosecutor on, on the federal level who, you know, ran different types of investigations and initiatives, to have someone with a prosecutorial background pushing uh, this effort because in many ways it is, a, uh, this is about enforcement. This is about uh, ensuring that the rules are complied with and who better to do that than someone who's been a prosecutor before. And so I'm pleased to have um, to have John uh, really representing the city uh, in housing court before the Board of Health as well as in uh, criminal court as, as, the, uh, as the situation warrants. And uh, I look forward to, to great things from you, John. Uh, but let me just uh, give them a few minutes just to talk a little bit about some of the mechanisms that we're going to use to enforce the code. Thank you, Mayor. As, um, as Councillor Lopes mentioned, this is, um, this is an effort both of sort of on the ground enforcement by a core team of, of people uh, across city departments. But in addition to that, it's a policy and planning initiative as well. It's about looking at the, looking at the, the problem from an organizational standpoint, from a legal standpoint, and examining the ordinances, examining the code to make sure that they're as, as tight and, and as um, and hold people as accountable as they need to be, particularly people we're talking about, the absentee landlords. So this effort is not just about the enforcement sweeps that, that are going to happen on a biweekly basis and the, and the subsequent follow-up in each neighborhood that's going to happen in between, in between one sweep and the next. It's about a, a sort of longer range strategic plan about making uh, our city as um, inhospitable, frankly, to people who um, do not treat our city with respect. So um, that's really what it's about. We, we convened a small group of people uh, right away uh, after Mayor Mitchell took office. We began planning this initiative um, among a, a you know, fairly small group of us within city government and then broadening it, broadening it out toward the, uh, the other city departments who are going to really be um, you know, involved in the meat and potatoes of this, of this effort. And we have a terrific team. And from the beginning, it's been about um, building this effort as, as a team and instilling in all of its all of its players the concept that they are a team and that and that who they're playing for are exactly those people that we just discussed the woman on Roosevelt Street and the woman on Vile mm -hmm. Street that that it's about intentionality any the success of any effort um, hinges on on intentionality and and so we all all of those those of us who are in this effort that's our intention and we have those people um, in our minds as we go about our work. And John's going to talk to you a little bit about um, the sort of more, more of the mechanics of the actual sweeps and the, the city departments who are involved in the, in the actual uh, on the ground effort. Thank you, Christine. And I want to uh, just to start off by uh, thanking the mayor for giving me the opportunity to uh, help head up this task force and more importantly, uh, give me the opportunity to uh, work for the people of New Bedford. We have a uh, very special city here, and uh, I believe we have a mayor who recognizes this and sees the uh, potential of this uh, city. 
Now the, uh, the task force, as Christina mentioned, is truly going to be a, a team endeavor. We have brought together some of the, uh, the best the uh, city of uh, New Bedford has to offer from uh, the police department, the fire department, health services, inspectional services, and uh, several other uh, departments, traffic as well. Now, uh, we will be going out into the neighborhoods as a team effort to enhance the quality of our neighborhoods. This uh, multi-pronged approach will give us additional tools to aid our enforcement efforts and to encourage individuals to do what should be done. Now, for the, uh, the mechanics of the actual sweeps, we will be going out in a team of about 12 to 15 people once every two weeks. Now, Several members of our team will follow up these sweeps with going uh, back to these same, same of these same, excuse me some of the same locations, doing continuous follow-ups, writing additional tickets, and enhancing the uh, potential penalties. As for uh, enforcement, we will uh, be giving certain individuals opportunities or everyone opportunity to correct what needs to be done. If that is not done, then we will go into the courts of the Commonwealth. We'll be going into housing court. We'll be going into district court. We'll be going potentially into superior court. And we will uh, be doing our best to uh, make every effort to make this uh, task force a success. Thank you. Thank you, John. Uh, there were many department heads represented here today, and, um, and what we hope to present, uh, and I think we are presenting, is a united front uh, uh, in uh, our effort to improve our neighborhoods. And so let me just take a couple of minutes to have um, each of the department heads weigh in about their department's role in this effort. And I'll start with Dave Preventer, our chief of police. I think that uh, over time, uh, those of us in law enforcement have learned uh, the dramatic lesson that what the district attorney alluded to earlier in his remarks is really the fact. And that's that in those neighborhoods where you can remove signs of disorder and blight, knuckleheads don't move in. And the more you can do to maintain liveliness in the community within a neighborhood and remove those signs of disorder, you can bring up the quality of life in those neighborhoods. And that's really a role we've played for as long as I've been a police officer and one that I think initiatives like the task force make a lot easier for us to accomplish. So I'm looking forward to our ability to work closely with the task force to help us improve the quality of life neighborhood by neighborhood. And over time, I think the city will improve dramatically behind those efforts. Good. Thank you, Chief. Um, one, is, one big part of the effort here, uh, one big part of the city code that comes into play here is the fire code. Um, you know, we have many neighborhoods that were built in the area of, of the mills in the city, stretching from the 1890s roughly through uh, the First World War. Many are like this, like this neighborhood here where houses are, are close together and where the risk of a large fire is significant. So enforcement of our fire code is exceedingly important. I wanted uh, to, to have Mike Gomes, our fire chief, uh, speak to the need of enforcing uh, the fire code uh, vigorously, uh, especially in neighborhoods like this that are um, prone to uh, the risk of a large uh, fire. Mike. Yes, good morning. Uh, the, the, the risk of fire in these high density neighborhoods is, is great in that we have a, uh, a large density of, of the populace that lives in these buildings that are less than 10 feet apart and that when we have a fire in these neighborhoods it can, can become very serious. Uh, we will be working, uh, redoubling our efforts to ensure that the fire codes are being uh, uh, complied with and attempting to remove fire hazards that do occur. Uh, just within the last month, we had a serious fire up on Beetle Street, which was caused by a fire in a plastic dumpster on the exterior of a building, which has now caused that building to be uninhabitable and impacted two other buildings in that neighborhood, just from you know a, 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 a dumpster fire on the exterior of the building. Uh, the actions that people take in these dense neighborhoods impact their neighbors. 
what your neighbor does can seriously impact you and your home if they are not complying with codes, if you're living in a, in a home where the fire alarm system is not working properly in order for you to have early warning if something is going on so that you and your family can, can escape from that situation and, uh, and, and be safe in your home and have peace of mind. So yeah, we will be working very vigorously with the uh, task force to ensure that these codes and ordinances are being enforced. All right, thanks, Chief. Um, and, and by the way, that Beale Street property was at a um, is owned is owned by a major absentee landlord. Is that right? That is correct. Um, let me uh, let me turn to Steve Marshallek from the Attorney General's office. Um, we have um, his boss, Martha Coakley, to thank for an important initiative that relates to these efforts, and that's uh, the state uh, receivership program, which will enable us. Uh, to put certain properties, uh, to basically save certain properties from destruction that, that are, you know, run down, copper stripped, uh, out of code. Um, and it's, this is an effort that's already borne fruit here in New Bedford and I think will play a bigger role once we, uh, we move forward. So, Steve. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, the Attorney General is excited to be part uh, of this task force. Uh, we've, as the Mayor has alluded to, we have a program called the Abandoning Housing Initiative. And with that program, we've been successful in going into court, uh, housing court, uh, first attempting to work with, with these landowners that uh, have properties that are not up to code uh, and asking them that they fix, uh, fix these properties up. If uh, they still are unwilling or unable to, we've petitioned the housing court uh, to appoint a receiver and, uh, and take on uh, the, the responsibilities, quite frankly, of what these uh, homeowners uh, should be doing. And the receiver will get these properties back up to code. It's, it's, a, it's a real successful program. Uh, it's located uh, throughout the state. We've been successful here in New Bedford on a, on a few homes, and we're excited uh, to be part of this task force. All right, thank you, Steve. Um, another aspect of uh, enforcement here is uh, the, the securing and management of, uh, of animals, of, of pets. And uh, this plays a big part in neighborhood quality. We have neighborhoods where dogs are running around, where they're not vaccinated or they're unleashed. That uh, adds to a sense of disorder. And so part of the task force necessarily includes uh, the, uh, the focus of uh, uh, our animal control uh, folks. And uh, Manny Maceo heads that department. And Manny, if you want to say a couple of words about your role in the task force. Sure, man. We just had our annual rabies clinic. Uh, close to 700 people came out uh, to get their animals vaccinated, trying to help people uh, in these low income uh, homes that can't afford vet care to come out and bring their, their animals up to, to the state and uh, to city codes. So um, we're, this is part of the program about, you know, getting people uh, the assistance they need so they can come in compliance with the codes of the state laws. So that's one of the uh, things we started doing and, and, and helping out so people can get that, uh, their dogs licensed and vaccinated. All right, thank you. Um, one of, uh, one of the major components to uh, ensuring neighborhood quality is to ensure that the sanitation code is complied with, and that includes garbage. It also includes other risks to sanitary living. Uh, and so uh, a, a major element of the task force would be the efforts of uh, our city's health inspectors. And Renee Stevens is here to tell us about uh, her department's role uh, in the effort. Uh, yes, good morning. Um, as part of the task force team, we're going to be going out there and we're going to be checking properties to bring them into compliance. We're going to be taking a uh, look at the exterior parts of the uh, dwelling. If we can get into some common areas, we'll do that as well. We want the outside to be well maintained. We want it to be cleaned up. We'll be looking for rodents and other issues that may be um, prevalent to the neighborhood and might be a blight to the neighborhood. Uh, so we're going to try to do the best we can to clean it up and we'll be there for people like you Loretta to help clean up these neighborhoods and make it a better safe environment for all of you. Let me, uh, let me turn to, uh, to Larry Warden who's the, the, uh, the director of uh, the Department of Public Facilities to say a word about uh, his department's role in uh, our task force efforts. Our department has been asked to assist in the, uh, the neighborhood sweeps, um, numerous uh, services that we provide. We will be working on things such as uh, litter and trash uh, cleanup along the city streets. Uh, we also do work on private, uh, private and city-owned vacant lots with the assistance of the community service program. 
Uh, we do graffiti removal. Uh, we also are involved in the uh, maintenance of the city street lights and uh, uh, maintenance of city trees, which includes trimming, removal if necessary, and uh, any sidewalk squares that may be lifted uh, due to the tree roots, uh, we will be uh, in the sweep areas uh, making repairs as necessary to the city sidewalks uh, in the vicinity of the trees. Uh, we also will have uh, two code enforcement inspectors uh, where we oversee the, uh, the contract with ABC Disposal. Uh, the inspectors will be out on a, on a daily basis uh, ensuring that not only is the trash put out properly, uh, they'll be citing uh, properties that have improper setouts, uh, but also um, on the follow-up in the neighborhoods to make sure that people are complying with the days that they're supposed to be um, putting out the trash. Uh, we will be also citing uh, properties that place trash uh, or bulky items or other items uh, curbside on the, on the uh, incorrect day of the week. All right, thank you, Larry. Let me, uh, let me turn now to, uh, to Danny Romanowitz, who is uh, in charge of the city's inspectional services, uh, to talk about uh, his department's efforts with respect to the task force and inspectional services is in the business of, as the name implies, uh, inspecting properties and making sure they are uh, up to code. Um, and Danny's department will be devoting inspectors to the task force to, uh, exclusively so that uh, they can focus on the neighborhoods that are uh, where the problem is particularly pressing. Go ahead, Danny. Thank you, man. Uh, this would be a very unique situation with the city being proactive of going into the neighborhoods. We usually work close with uh, neighborhood leaders. Uh, when you have your monthly meetings, we get the, the list of properties that need to be done. We take care of them, but it just it's continually day by day. So the, I'll have two inspectors out there. They'll be eyes on. They'll be doing uh, the state building code and also zoning. So it's gonna range anything from uh, fire, fire escapes to porches, you got uh, city ordinances where you might find uh, an illegal business or you might find signs that aren't supposed to be in the neighborhood. So it's gonna be a, a good team effort where we could have the streets taken care of at the same time, cars removed, uh, litter picked up, um, citations uh, given out, and if if the um, situation isn't resolved, we have John Floor to take him to court, and uh, we'll make sure that the neighborhoods are, are, are back into the neighbors' hands. Thank you. All right, thanks, Danny. Um, you know, parking and car violations are also part of this effort. In many neighborhoods, we have abandoned cars, we have cars that are uh, up on blocks that are parked on top of sidewalks, blocking uh, um, uh, people from walking up and down the street. And so uh, for this reason, uh, our parking enforcement department will play a role in, um, in our task force's efforts to, to improve neighborhoods generally. And so Scott Downey can uh, speak to his department's uh, role in, in some detail. I actually lived on Ruth and Roosevelt a long time ago my first apartment the house is no longer there uh, as far as parking uh, what we take care of is uh, you, you know it is a whole ripple effect with the parking you have your sidewalks that get broken up like the mayor was saying cars parked up on the sidewalks cars blocking your fire hydrants uh, just making the neighborhood a dangerous neighborhood to walk through or to live in if there is a fire and that hydrant is blocked uh, there, there are also some other ripple effects that would help uh, our chief where we, if we go, if and when we go, when we go through there, we'll tag people and we'll see how their frequency of them being there. Because you also have a lot of people out there that that may live here with addresses that are from somewhere else. Uh, and, and when the chief goes through, he'll have he can get a history that those people, in fact, are are in these neighborhoods every day and are part of the problem uh, that. Uh, living in and, and possibly dealing, doing whatever they shouldn't be doing. Uh, I, you know, the knuckleheads, as the chief said, which is a nice polite word for most of them. But, um, and, and usually once we go through quite a few times, we, 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 uh, we, we upset some people that, that get the extra cost of, of doing what they're doing with their vehicles. So I, I'm sure that our part also will help in many ways. 
uh, to curb and, and hopefully get rid of some of some of these knuckleheads and the blight out of the neighborhood. Um, thank you, Scott. Uh, one thing that is important to point out to people is that this isn't just about enforcement. Ultimately, it's about neighborhood improvement, and, and in that way, our efforts need to be integrated with the city's uh, uh, larger vision for neighborhood improvement. Uh, and so in that way, uh, playing big roles in the task force's efforts are our tax title attorney, Blair Bailey, as well as the director of our Department of Housing and Community Development, Pat Sullivan. You guys could just uh, weigh in to let people know how your efforts will be integrated with the task forces. Why don't you go ahead, Blair? When, and, and I, I couldn't be more happy to sit here today for this, with this task force. I mean, one of the things that I see a lot in my job as a tax title attorney is the frustration of the residents in the neighborhoods of the city of some of these properties. And, and I, I'm more than happy to do what I can to try and speed up the process in some of these vacant lots, some of the abandoned houses that are in these neighborhoods that need to come down or that the city needs to get control of as fast as we can. Um, we've, we've done our best to, to get this going, and I think... Uh, from my standpoint, whatever we can do um, to speed it up on, on, on some of the abandoned property, some of the vacant lots, and also some of these landlords that uh, think that one of the things they don't have to do is pay their taxes on, on time and, and with the city. So any, anything we can do to help to get this going is... is right, thank you, Blair. Pat? Thank you very much, Mayor. Um, it, it really is a pleasure to be here, and I think that uh, a common theme here is teamwork and, and, and having city departments work together along with uh, some outside agencies is, is really important to the success. Our particular department will be working closely um, um, on the redevelopment side, looking at uh, these particular neighborhoods, trying to make improvements uh, where appropriate. So in many instances, uh, when uh, properties uh, become very derelict and run down, uh, they need to be demolished. And that's a last resort, but sometimes it's necessary uh, so our office will be uh, using community development block grant funds to, to help with that. Um, and also uh, assisting competent uh, and really landlords that are invested in the city that are seeking funding to, to revitalize their properties. Uh, many of these properties in the neighborhoods uh, have retain a tremendous historic value in, in, in enabling those properties to be redeveloped uh, is, is another part of the initiative. Uh, so I think <clears throat> Uh, the other issue also is uh, when vacant lots arise in the community, they become sometimes as much of a nuisance as uh, a vacant property. So we would be using, again, community development block grant funds to, to develop those vacant lots into pocket parks, into uh, community gardens, and really improving and enhancing the neighborhood, uh, in addition to uh, upgrading the streets and sidewalks with uh, community development funds also. So I think um, using uh, these funds wisely and uh, working with the task force in unison, I think will really help to improve the quality of life in, in the neighborhoods. Great, thank you, Pat. Um, now, let me, um, I wanted to just offer uh, members of the media a couple of minutes to ask questions, and then we'll go ahead uh, on a tour of the neighborhood so that we all have a sense of what we're talking about here. Now, um, uh, you know, Sam is used to having a press conference when he's up there by himself with many members of the media asking him questions. We actually have the opposite here today. So Natalie, I think, is the only member of the media here, right? Oh, Jim's here. It is Jim, sorry. You two guys, and then we'll, we've got a whole gaggle of people up here. So the rules are reversed, but uh, the dialogue is just the same. So whoever wants to go first. Go ahead, Jim. Now, what makes uh, this different than the previous administration's uh, program? Uh, there was a, uh, an enforcement program uh, under the previous administration. I can tell you get a lot of phone calls uh, when people get tickets. Uh, what's going to make this different? Uh, well, I, I can't speak to the previous administration's program. All I know is that there is a dire need in many neighborhoods for stronger code enforcement. Uh, the need has grown over the last few years, Jim, as a result of many homes being bought out of, out of foreclosure by uh, a handful of landlords who haven't done their part in keeping up um, uh, their end of the bargain. So um, this is all about addressing what I see as a, as a, uh, a slippery slope. And we, are, we have neighborhoods that are rapidly deteriorating. I'm not going to sit around and, and let that happen. 
Uh, and so we've assembled a team. We've planned this out. Um, there will be uh, hiccups along the way. We will make sure we correct our mistakes. And at the end of the day, what we want people to know is that when the code says, you know, you, you shouldn't pile garbage all over your, your property and let it blow around the wind, uh, we mean it. And I just use that as one illustration. Uh, we're, we're about to get serious with this. And uh, uh, time will, I, I think, show that, uh, that the city will be better off for it. No, uh, and that's because uh, this is not about targeting particular people. We're not in the business of, of singling people out uh, as as, uh, as as criminals. Now, that's not to say that that's not to say that um, you know if we find that there are repeat offenders, uh, that uh, there won't be a, a need and a justification to uh, focus our efforts uh, toward those property owners. I mean, as Sam can tell you, as Chief Prevention can tell you, um, law enforcement does focus uh, its efforts on people who uh, don't get the message. And so if we find that there are certain landlords who are continue to flout uh, the housing code in this city, then there will be a need for us to uh, address them directly. But this is not about targeting individuals. Yeah, and let me just add, before we go on the tour, let me just add one point. And this is, what you see here is consistent with something I feel very, very strongly about and one of the reasons that I ran for mayor. And that is, this is a great community. This is a great place to live. And we shouldn't tolerate the kinds of stuff that we've been seeing in these neighborhoods. We shouldn't settle for people cutting corners, for people thinking that they can run their neighborhood, run their properties down and, have, and, and to disregard the complaints of, of uh, the people who live in close proximity to them. Um, we need to continue to raise our sights, and this is part of uh, my push to, uh, to, uh, to really not tolerate things that would never be tolerated in you know, some of the fancy suburbs in the Boston area. If, we had neighbor, if, if you take the town of Wellesley or one of those communities up there, um, you know, they would never put up with the likes of what we're seeing in some of our neighborhoods. And so we shouldn't treat it any differently. We should maintain uh, the same level of, uh, of, of um, lawfulness and neighborhood care as, that they expect uh, there. We're no different, we're no less than them. And uh, I believe that um, this is part, this is all part of an effort to, uh, to really raise our sights. on the wrong day so how, how how do you figure out who to punish basically or who who needs to change whose actions need to change to make the code be enforced Renee you want to uh, you want to address that question about trash the owner of any uh, occupied dwelling should be notifying their occupants as to how and when to place out the garbage and if they're not educating their occupants then they're going to find themselves being fined for the garbage that is put out too early or that isn't put out properly. We're asking for the proper amount of receptacles with receptacle covers, which are lids, um, on these receptacles for each tenant. Uh, there's no need of it being out early in the morning or early in the day. It's scheduled for after 5 p.m. Uh, the night before your scheduled pickup date. We're asking for compliance with the landlords and with the occupants. This is the only way it's going to work if an owner notifies his tenants, makes them aware of what the city policy is, and then it will all come into play. Okay. All right. Thank you, everyone. We're going to go take a walk around the neighborhood and, uh, and uh, to take a good look at what, we're, what we've been talking about.
Well, you guys can see the garbage here. I mean, look at this. Operation Clean Sweep has been here several times. Oh, yeah. The association to <laughs> clean up the property, and it continues the to city come has right back here. Kind of the same type of deal. We've been doing this for years. So one of the things that's important to point out is that most of the garbage that's blown around on the street is garbage that was placed in barrels at some point. And it was either blown out of the barrel because, because the, the lid was off of it, right, Renee? Uh, or it was knocked over, or people were just putting them out, uh, putting bags out on the street that got you know, broken into by seagulls or something. But that's where most of the coming. It's not people so much throwing stuff out of their car windows. This is... Yeah, that's right. but I think most of it, when you see it like this, it's not, it's not from cars. But Mayor, when you say that they have an obligation, the, the owner of the property, to keep this clean, uh, yeah, no matter absolutely. what, if we get garbage outside of our house, we'll be out there picking it up. Yeah. They have an obligation to keep the property yeah. clean, especially when you have city agencies like Clean Sweep and, and the Crime Watch groups come in and do a magnificent job only to, to return 48 hours later and you've got the same oh, absolutely. existing problem yeah. going on. Yeah, absolutely. So that's, you know, that's it. It's, it's not, you can't leave it to Operation Clean Sweep to fix everybody's problems. It's, you know, people need to stand up and, uh, you know, fulfill their obligations to their neighborhood. Raise their families and this this um, particular house, I just put it to court. The DA's office called me on this. Um, it's atrocious. Oh, this one, yeah, sure, yeah. Look at the broken window over here. See if I can see the sign right here. Yeah. Somebody throws something in there and catches on fire. And it's that then again to the house, and mattresses, all the way back, um, furniture. seen here today are some examples of, of what we were talking about in the press conference. We've seen properties that are strewn with garbage, we've seen properties that have uh, blatant code violations, railings detached, um, cars up on the sidewalk, um, garbage improperly stored, um, uh, some unleashed, unleashed pets. So these are the things that we're talking about. So the, what we've been able to show viewers is, you know, really some of the problems that we're, uh, we're really trying to address here. Um, the neighborhood improvement really starts with, with uh, code compliance. If people aren't willing to take care of their own properties because they don't live in those properties, then, uh, then the whole neighbor, neighborhood suffers. Property values decline uh, and other problems ensue. And what we're trying to do is really nip it in the bud. Uh, that's, uh, that's the effort that we've been talking about. That's what I'm committed to. And I believe, I believe that we're going to make some progress uh, in time. It's going, to take, it's going to take a little bit of time. It's a big team effort, but we've got the right people in place and the right determination. I think uh, people are going to see a reversal of uh, a trend that's been plaguing our city for a while. What we do to the planet, we do to ourselves. You can help keep America beautiful. Visit kab.org. This color really looks great on you. Oh my gosh, guys, I totally forgot to tell you. I like broke up with Jeff. 
No way. Why? Because I was like at his house the other day and he totally threw his water bottle in his paper recycling bin. Ugh, ew. That's so gross. I know, right? And I've told him like a million times. It's so easy. It's just cardboard and paper in one and plastic, cans, metal, glass, and bottles in the other. But he just wouldn't listen, so I had to kick him to the curb. <laughs> you go, girl. Call Marissa at 508 979 1493 to request your free recycling bins. This message was brought to you by the City of New Bedford and UMass Dartmouth Charlton School of Business.